Hi there and welcome back to our course together. Uh, before watching this video, uh, please have a look at the following terms and try to understand what we mean by each. I'm definitely going to explain each one of them, give you examples. However, I prefer that you um, read about them. You may refer to the Quizlet set I shared earlier, um, the textbook, or do your own online search. We have um, discussed first language acquisition and the stages of development um, from the moment the baby is born until they are around five years old. There are many theoretical views about how this process happens. How does language acquisition, first language acquisition happen? And we selected four theories, which are the behaviorist, universal grammar, interactionist, and connectionist theory. Um, these four theories are actually related to second language acquisition, which we will be discussing in the following chapters. This is why it is important to understand what each theory or view means. Let's begin with the behaviorist view, also known as the empiricist. The proponent is B.F. Skinner, an American psychologist. What Skinner and other behaviorists believe is that language is something observable and they believe whatever they can see this is why it is empiricist based on studies and empirical research the child is a passive recipient of language that is um, uh, the child is simply receiving from the input from the environment and language is expressed as a type of verbal behavior uh, language acquisition therefore is explained and evaluated according to observable behaviors by the uh, child. Uh, whatever the child reacts as a result of language exposure um, is what we take as a proof of language acquisition. Let's look at the following chart. Let's begin here with vocabulary comprehension. There are two processes, according to Skinner, happening when child uh, when the child starts using uh, language. First, what happens is vocabulary comprehension or uh, what is known as um, a classical conditioning. What is happening when the child understands certain words is that they are doing classical conditioning as in associating stimulus and response. What we mean by this is the following. Let's look at the example here. Imagine the baby hurt themselves and then the mother looks at their hurt of foot or leg or hand, whatever, and the mother says the word boo-boo. Here, the child will associate the pain, which is stimulus here, with the uttered word, with, which is boo-boo. And thus, comprehension happens in that the child understands that the, the, the utterance boo-boo means there is pain in one of the body parts another example like in the book they mention the word milk uh, the baby sees uh, the baby is hungry they see the 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 milk bottle and the mom is holding this bottle and saying do you want milk here's your milk the mother is repeating the word milk and once the baby takes this liquid substance, they feel a satisfaction of their hunger, they understand that the word milk uh, is actually linked to the feeling of satisfaction of hunger, therefore milk is the sound that means they will be eating. Um, now we go to the production phase or the production stage where the, where, where the process that is happening is operant conditioning and operant is an adjective that means anything that yields or gives a result uh, gives an effect and this is what happens here that the child starts using or uttering the um the 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 word or the sound that they were receiving and uh, once they utter this they receive the desired effect and by the desired effect here we mean um, let's say the word boo-boo, uh, which, let's say the baby heard themselves, and then they said boo-boo, and the mother comes and says something like, where's the boo-boo, and then they point to their hand, and um, the mother kisses the, 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 the part that hurts, and this is the desired effect, they got the attention of the mother. 
uh, the baby says milk and then the mom brings the milk and they see the button so what's happening is a kind of reinforcement of the utterance um finally uh let's look at the last part here there's a role for um, the direct imitation as reinforcement to what is desired. They are imitating the utterance they had heard before in order to get what they want. Another example for this is when the baby utters, let's say, the word water and they expect the caregiver to give them the water bottle. We are done with the behaviors view. You may pause here and read the section in the textbook or uh, repeat the video. And again, take some notes or write some questions if you have any. Now let's move to the universal grammar theory. According to the universal grammar theory, which is also known as the nativist theory by Noam Chomsky again. Um, where's the cursor? Okay. Um, we have... A pre-wired ability, as we discussed before in the first section of our lesson, um, we have what is called um, language faculty or language ability. According to Chomsky and other nativists, the environment is just a trigger for what is already there. Our, uh, our language ability is already there in the brain. It's just that the input triggers what is there. Focus on this point. And language, according to them, is a unique system with its own rules, just like other cognitive systems, mental systems we have in our brains. And humans are endowed or uh, genetically predisposed with this ability to learn a language, to acquire a language. And we have what is called a set of universal um, principles or underlying principles, and this is why we call it universal grammar. Another thing is that input data are not enough to allow language acquisition. No, let's say if someone does not have the ability to speak, uh, to learn the language, um, no matter how much input you give them, they won't be able to talk or to um, uh, um, to read and write, etc. However, um, uh, if they have this uh, language, they are normal human beings with this language ability, the input data will be enough to allow uh, language acquisition. And as we said before, there's a sequence of language development, which is universal among all human beings. There are two points that are uh, that are um, discussed here as, as a kind of proof to the, um, um, to the, to the actuality of universal grammar theory or it being a logical theory. Children receive language as abbreviated utterances, interruptions. They don't receive language. When we take from your experience with your children or brothers and sisters or nieces and nephews, when we speak to a child, to a toddler, to a baby, we tend to give them short utterances, interruptions, and sequences that are not that grammatical. We don't follow rules of grammar. I think we're, when we're talking Arabic to kids. Um, and there's limited exposure to grammar. However, the child produces correct grammatical structures. Eventually, after three, uh, four, five years, uh, five years before um, the child starts learning the native L1 language that is Arabic in our environment, at school, they can speak it with uh, correct, uh, accurate uh, grammatical um, form. Therefore, according to the universal grammar theory, this proves that there's something already there that helps children um, form language without being taught. Let's move now to the interactionist view. This view actually combines two factors, the innate structure, the genetic predisposition and the um, effect of environment. Remember the work test, this its proponent is Birkin Gleason who uh, um, carried out this work test. According to the interactionist view, language is a communicative act. Um, there's an interplay of linguistic structures, cognitive abilities, that is kind of similar to the universal grammar theory, 
And we also have social and linguistic environment. That is the input of the environment of the child. The interplay between these two factors actually produces um, language and allows language acquisition. Inter the interactionist view actually gives um, a lot of uh, 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 emphasis on the role that the mother, especially, and the caregivers in generally um, play in language acquisition. When the mother uh, treats the language or the speech that is of the child as meaningful and intentional, she actually enhances their language development and she allows this um, acquisition to take place. Let's look here at the word negotiation. What do we mean by the mother negotiating with uh, a child? If we look again, this is an interactionist view. And negotiation, that is the mother is allowing for this conversation to go on between her and the baby. Ever since the baby is few days old, the mother takes their nonverbal um, uh, uh, sounds as uh, as messages that they're trying to convey. And when the baby starts um, saying the um, the uh, uttering sounds in the babbling stage and later in the in the holophrastic stage and the telegraphic stage, the mother is actually uh, communicating with the child and trying to understand what they want. So she is allowing for this negotiation. She's doing this interaction. Mothers are so patient, even if the child pronounces, uh, uh, mispronounces certain words, she still treats them as, um, as um, messages, uh, linguistic messages that the child is trying to produce. One of the important aspects of linguistic environment is using speech adaptations here, according to the interactionist view, that um, uh, caregivers tend to adapt their speech in order to um, improve uh, the language acquisition of their ch children. Mothers who talk more actually uh, help their children, according to studies, uh, grow faster vocabulary what we mean here is just faster vocabulary growth the the the, the number of words that they know some cultures um, uh, use the CDS child directed speech I hope you looked this up and let's see what we mean by CDS they are speech adjustments that happen through practices such as simplified words that is when the mother caregiver father um, talks to the child in a modified way. It changes in pitch, intonation, a slow rate, longer, frequent pauses, stress on sounds and syllables, repetition, paraphrasing, and questioning. All of these help the child in um, a language development. You may refer here to book page 16 for a conversation between a baby, Allison, and her mother and see how CDS happens. Now that we're done with the interactionist view, let's move to the connectionist view, uh, which is also known as emergentism. Pardon me for these. Um, and this is a very recent uh, view and still in the early stages of testing. Why emergentism? Because according to them, language abilities emerge, appear in real time. Let's pause here and remember the universal grammar theory, which um, suggests that uh, language is a uh, language ability, the language faculty is already there. And uh, in our cognitive abilities, we have the underlying structure of all languages, and it depends on which environment we come from um, that we produce that language. However, according to the connections to view, no, what happens is a complex network of interconnections between neurons. That is, we're talking about the nervous system uh, that is uh, receiving input of data information. And then um, it, the, the connection between neurons is producing the language. Um, therefore, language is developed with ongoing exposure through input. And uh, after this interconnection between neurons, uh, a construction of association of sounds, words, sentence patterns happens. And thus, the child is able to produce the language and the language is permanently acquired. Not that the child already has this underlying universal grammar structure. Therefore, children are sensitive to the frequency of input and this explains over-regularization. Refer to this term and what it means, please. Uh, and this explains over-regularization when the child applies a rule to uh, new uh, structures. 
So in conclusion, now what, what the, does all this mean? That first language acquisition theories help us in second language acquisition.